Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Hitman, again. If you enjoyed this video, please build up an army and overthrow your current government and then force the political office to become a dictatorship with you in command. And then announce that everyone must subscribe to Modest Pelican Gaming or they will be publicly hanged, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Today's mission brings us to the suburban sanctuary of Whittleton's Creek. This neighbourhood sure looks peaceful, but two big time dodgy crooks live here and we plan to assassinate them both. They are Nolan Cassidy, who looks like he probably isn't allowed within 50 metres of a school, and Janice, who looks to be on life support so will hopefully just die from natural causes and save me a lot of trouble. For our outfit, we'll go with the suburban suit. I don't know how the hell this is classified as a suburban suit, as when Agent 47 and wears this thing, he literally looks like a KGB agent who's half man and half machine, but whatever. We will pick some sneaky gadgets and try to do this mission quietly. Sedative pills, a silenced pistol, a lock pick, a briefcase, and of course, a fully automatic unsuppressed TAC-4 MK2 assault rifle. So I've basically got the start of this mission down pat. You walk up here in your suburban suit, blending seamlessly into the environment, and then proceed to take the assault rifle out of the briefcase. This young lady who is on her morning jog won't notice you because she is wearing super cool AirPods. Once she runs past, you're going to want to unload several rounds into her thick booty. These shots will alert everyone in the neighborhood and then this undercover cover agent will pull a gun on you and you'll want to shoot him too. Now nah, look guys, I'm just kidding. Let's restart the mission and actually be a stealthy professional hitman. But good God, I just realized that we are only two minutes into this video and I, a privileged white man, have just shot a woman and a black man. Before I get called out for being a bigot, remember that the two targets are both white men. We are all inclusive on this channel. We murder all genders and races. Okay, time to get serious. I Stroll into the neighborhood and get ready to do some reconnaissance and notice there is some kind of pink food event going on. As I get closer, I see the company Helen's Muffins is giving away free samples. I wander over and help myself to a muffin. Sadly, there is no option to eat the muffin, so I place it on a plate. The guy in the blue shirt is a real estate agent. I know this because he is talking loudly and being obnoxious. Damn, this game really immerses you with its realism. I learn from his phone conversation that he is planning to sell a house to my first target, Nolan Cassidy. He walks over and eats the muffin that I had placed down. Now that is valuable intel. See, I want the real estate agent's disguise, but I can't knock out or kill him here in front of these people. But maybe I can poison another muffin and hope that he eats it again. But to poison the muffin, I'll need to dress up as a food server or people will get suspicious. You might be thinking, hey Pelican, just poison the muffin and then place it down. Well, I tried to do this, but the game didn't let me. Goddamn limitations of video games. I should just strap a GoPro on my head and go and assassinate some people in real life. That would be good content. Anyway, I jog down the street. For some reason, I'm still carrying around my assault rifle in a briefcase. No real plan for that, but you know how the saying goes. There's no problem a fully automatic weapon can't solve. There's a pink muffin van outside this house, and so I decide to investigate. I jump the fence and then slip in through an open window. I find myself in the garage and notice a pink beetle parked there. I think I may have just broken into Helen, the pink muffin lady's house. Or as us secret assassins would say, I've just tactically muff dived deep into the pink. I slide into the kitchen unprotected and there she is, Helen. And she is chatting to a gardener. I know what I have to do. I once again retrieve my assault rifle and get ready to paint this pink kitchen blood red. I'm kidding. We won't go down that road again. I sneak into the kitchen and steal a muffin. Fortunately, the little mamazito Helen is outside talking to the gardener and so I have a small window to look around her house freely. I find a pink handgun under her pillow. See, I have played Hitman games for quite a while and I have developed a highly skilled instinct. A lot of players would have missed this, but I can tell you now that I think Helen's favorite color is pink, which is more valuable intel. Whilst I am snooping around upstairs, I accidentally press X when sneaking past one of those mounted singing fish. A pretty hilarious rookie error, but I guess it just goes to show that even bald elite assassins make mistakes. For some reason, the gardener feels compelled to come and investigate, 
plate and so I do the logical thing and throw a muffin at his head. Unsurprisingly, the muffin didn't knock him out and so I falcon punch him in the tibia which naturally finishes the job. I take his outfit and dump his unconscious body in the closet. And finally in the downstairs bathroom I find something useful, a muffin man server disguise. The muff diver has become the muff server. I head back to the stall and place the muffin down and then add the poison. Fortunately, the actual muff manager did not turn around as he was the only fool here who would have known I wasn't an employee. Sure enough, like clockwork, the real estate agent eats the muffin and then feels sick and wanders away clutching his stomach. We get to the road and the big dumb idiot doesn't even look left or right before crossing. Like bro, I know you've just been poisoned, but do you want to get run over by a car as well? So careless. He finds a secluded place to vomit and while he is struggling, I smack him in the back of his head with my briefcase and take his outfit and key to the house that is for sale. Again, using my highly skilled assassin's instinct that I was telling you about earlier, I locate the house that I am going to pretend to sell. How did I know that this was the right house? Well, I guess I just see things that others don't, like all these massive for sale signs on the front lawn. The place is pretty empty, which makes it the perfect environment to eliminate hopeful house buyer Nolan Cassidy. There is, however, a small complication by the way of a repairman fixing the sink. Like, what does he think this is? The start of a low-budget adult film or something? I find a paddle in the garage and smack the wannabe Ron Jeremy in the head and hide his body. With the house cleared, it's time to find Nolan Cassidy and bring him back to his coffin. Did you like that? I called the house a coffin because he's going to die there. That was pretty badass in my opinion. I'm kind of ruining it now by explaining it, but that was some Hollywood shit right there. I find Cassidy and the conversation goes something like, hey, what's up? I'm here to show you the house. And Cassidy is like, dude, weren't you an Indian guy before? And I'm just like, lol, bro, just come with me. And Cassidy is like, lol, Okay, bro. Well, I mean, that was a paraphrased version, but you get the gist. Cassidy and his personal bodyguard follow me to the property as everything begins to fall perfectly into place. I literally give him a tour of the house. Listening to Agent 47 try to be a real estate agent was pretty damn funny. The kitchen is the most dangerous room in the home. I feel like saying a room is the most dangerous room in the house might be slightly overplaying our hand here, 47, but I guess I did accidentally set off a singing fish earlier, so I don't really have a leg to stand on. Cassidy is really eager to see the basement, and so we head down there and there is this high security safe that he gets a hard on for. When I did my initial sweep of the house, I didn't actually realise there was a basement. I literally missed one third of the house, which is frankly bloody poor form from an assassin and might even be worse than the the singing fish incident. Anyway, the safe security card is conveniently right there, and so I open the big metal puppy up and there's laser security, it's basically the real deal. Cassidy then asks his private security guard to go out the back and make sure that the garden is nice and moist and that the plants are sufficiently hydrated. He then asks me to disable the security system, which is luckily set to the default code. This actually reminds me of when I was young and me and my friend wanted to watch the Naughty Foxtel channel and the code to access it was just the default code of 1234. And so we entered it and watched the channel, but we didn't realize that it wasn't free and it went to his dad's credit card and we were in a lot of trouble to put it lightly. Anyway, back to the mission, Cassidy proceeds to enter the vault and you know your boy put the security system back online, which exploded him for a feisty elimination. Somehow no one notices the explosion, but I make sure to choke out his security guard to ensure no one realizes what has just gone down. I also take his security outfit because why the f not? I've been taking the briefcase with the assault rifle around with me everywhere I go, and I decide it's time to have an amicable breakup. Carrying this around is more effort than it's worth. I will miss it though, as we had some good memories. This pain is just too real. There's just too much that time cannot erase. The time to kill target two. Janus. Janus is a dumb name, so I'm really glad I get to kill this guy. Anyway, the security guard disguise I stole isn't going to give me access to Janus's house because it's a different crew keeping watch. So I decide to head around to his neighbor's yard and try and scout the area out a little bit. I notice that I can break the motor on the neighbor's garage and so I do so and sneak in. My general plan is to try to look out a window or something across to Janus's property. In this family's garage, they have a fridge stocked full of alcohol, 
They also had a boat out the front, and honestly, I just wish these guys were my neighbours in real life. They seem fun. My neighbours suck, they're always getting annoyed at me for leaving the bin on the street and stuff. I pick another lock and find myself descending into the basement. There's drums, guitars, microphones, a huge sound system, and just about everything you would need to have a good old jam session. Obviously I can't help myself, and I turn on the sound system. This strangely alerts a garbage man to come down and investigate what has happened. Instinctively, I throw a crowbar at his head. I go and put on his outfit, and then change back to the security outfit, but I notice something odd. This garbage man was packing a silenced pistol and a key to Janice's house. I look around some more and find another door that leads me to a small room with a bookcase. I pull one of the books and it opens up a secret passageway. What the hell is going on down here? Is this the Chamber of Secrets? The next thing I know, I'll be playing bloody Quidditch and defeating Lord Voldemort. In this secret tunnel, I find clothing that matches Janice's security detail, flashbang grenades and a silenced Uzi. I follow the passage all the way across what I'm guessing is is Janice's basement. There is one sod patrolling and so I wait for my moment and then use one of the flashbang grenades and tinnitus the fool and then choke him out. I hide the body and also disable the camera surveillance for the property. The disguise gives me the ability to move around the house more freely but I still have to be careful as a lot of the guards will know I'm not part of their crew. I find Janice and notice that he spends a bit of time hanging out in the kitchen near an empty food plate. I have an audacious idea. I leave Janice's house and muff dive back into Helen, the muffin business owner's house to steal another muffin. I then run all the way back and break back into Janice's house and then place the muffin on the plate, but add the special ingredient of rat poison that I had found in one of the garages. Eventually, Janice goes back to the kitchen and can't help himself and eats the muffin. I never would have guessed how important muffins were going to be to this operation. Janice feels ill and heads to the bathroom, but his skin security guard watches the door. I run outside and do a full lap of the house and jump through the bathroom window. There's Janice throwing up like an 18 year old who had one too many light beers. I proceed to drown the evil old man in the toilet bowl as his security detail waits outside with no idea that the world's biggest swirly is going down just meters away. I slip out the window and get out of there before anyone notices. With both targets eliminated, I yeet out of the neighborhood, mission complete. Thanks for watching you legends and for the insane support as always on this channel. This community is easily the moistest on YouTube. Thanks so much to my patrons for their incredible generosity. Enjoy the rest of your week. Until next time and as always, stay classy.